have stocks on Wall Street? How many of you have a 401k? Okay, so not everybody has money in, in the stock market. But how many of you have ever bought a house? How many of you wear shoes? How many of you eat food? I hope they're legit. Most of them are that one. So I was very, very excited when I found this quote because I realized at least one other person in the world agrees with me. Every time you spend money, you're casting a vote for the kind of world you want. And a pay. Everyone is an investor. And whether you're 8 or 80, where you spend your money tells those companies to keep doing what they're doing. You're telling the company that manufactures its products in China to keep doing that. You're telling the store that pays its employees poorly to keep doing that. Or maybe you're telling the grocer that buys its produce with no pesticides to keep doing that. And you're telling the store that sold you the t-shirt that fed a family for a week to keep doing that. Every purchase you make is an investment. And therefore, everyone is an investor. And what if we could measure those daily investments the same way we measure our 401k? And what if we could value, align our values with our everyday purchases? And what if I told you that was called social return on investment? The definition of social return on investment is here. But very simply put, it's what happens when you take a solid business model, combine it with heart, passion, purpose, mission, whatever you want to call it, and you end up making your community, your country, your world better. What if your mortgage broker donated money to a local soup shop that suits men in need for free? What if your realty company was owned by four nonprofits that are doing good in your community? What if you bought a backpack that funds anti-bullying programs in high schools? And what if you bought a burrito that gave someone a job skill that was part of a food service training program? Every purchase you make is an investment. And what if I told you these companies are in your backyard? And what if I told you that they save you money, save your community money, just by existing? Everyone is an investor. So I am not a numbers person. I hated statistics. I almost failed it, twice. <laughs> but numbers are important. They are common ground across cultures they express value, and they give us a point of comparison. But I think sometimes we get caught up in the numbers to compare apples to apples, and sometimes oranges are an option too. Let's go back to the stock market for a second. Raj Sisodia and um, some other really smart people uh, decided to get together and see how some of these companies that are doing good fare on the open stock market. And some of the characteristics that they look for, these are examples of some of the companies, some of the characteristics that they look for, that they found in these companies or firms of endearment, is that they are paying their employees a higher wage and a better benefit package than others in their category. They're hiring people that are passionate about customer service. They're treating their supply chain as partners in productivity and quality and they value their corporate culture as one of their greatest assets. So in comparing these companies, they took the Standard & Poor's 500, which is the top 500 performing stocks. They took Jim Collins, good to great companies, that were evaluated for their culture as well as for their endurance. And then they took these firms of endurance, both US and international. And in comparing them, after three years, nothing too earth shattering. The standard employers returned about a 57% return. 
The good to great companies were 222 percent. That's why they're great, right? And your firms of endearment returned 83 percent. So better than the average stock market, but not as good as those great companies. And then we look at five years, and then we look at 10 years, and then we get to 15 years. 1,681% return for companies that chose doing good, not over the bottom line, but in addition to the bottom line. Everyone is an investor. And whether you chose to buy shares in these stocks on the stock market, or you supported them directly by buying their products and services, you benefited in the long run. Eric Reese, the author of Lean Startups, is working on a long-term stock exchange. And with a long-term stock exchange, what he wants is for companies to be able to focus on not just quarterly earnings statements, but 15 years from now, and what that could look like, and what the potential of good that business can do for all of your pocketbooks, but also for your community and your environment. So when you're looking to invest, specifically in your 401k, you have these options. You have high risk profiles, you have low risk profiles, and you have everything in between. You have the option for donor advised funds, and you can even do social impact investing profiles. But how do you know these companies are doing good? That's where social return on investment comes in. Being able to measure the impact these companies are having and being able to tell their story is how you will know. So for social return on investment, we, my colleagues and I have developed something very similar to risk profiles, but we call them impact profiles. They're broken down into three categories. The established social return on investment is considered certain or most likely to have a social return on investment. Your probable SROI is considered very likely to have a return. And your possible SROI is, very, is likely to have a return, but maybe the data isn't quite as strong as it could be. So let's look at an example. Let's say you have some money to invest, and there's two companies that are an option. The first company wants to give out 500 bandages. That's a lot, right? 500, that's a lot of people to help that's very visible, it's tangible, it's something that you know when you see people walking around with those band-aids. I did that, I helped with that. Don't forget a band-aid that says you're in a ninja, in a ninja fight. Hmm. And then you have an option for a company that's going to serve five people for one year in intensive health care. So probably a little more expensive than a band-aid. Maybe it's got some prevention effects. Maybe it's got some intervention effects. But at the end of that year, those people may look no different medically than they did at the beginning of the year. But let's delve into the SROI profiles a little bit. So for the 500, for the established SROI, you've got, it's immediate, it's visible, it's a large quantity. You get a cool band-aid out of it. Your probable SROI is you probably had some prevention associated with that probably kept that cut from getting infected. And your possible SROI doesn't really exist on this one. And then we look at the five. So your established SROI, what if you intervened in the early stages of a disease? What if you caught someone in the early stages of diabetes? Or you caught someone in the early stages of cancer? Probably has some cost savings associated with that. Probably a quality of life difference too for the treatment of that. If you have your probable SROI, how did you prevent certain diseases from coming about? What was the impact that you made there? And maybe just by keeping that person healthier for a year, they were able to stay in school or they kept a job. And then we get to possible SROI. And maybe by staying in school or keeping that job, they provided more stability for their family over a longer period of time. And maybe for those kids in their home that watched them go to work or to school every day, 
and be successful, maybe those kids could be more successful in work and in school. So every investor is going to align with a different value in each of these scenarios. But it shows that not everything is apples to apples. And it's good to know that it's apples to oranges. And the measurement of that impact and being able to look at those impact profiles can help you make buying decisions. So, SRY is not just for consumers. If you as a consumer can align your values with how you're going to make purchases based on impact profiles and social return on investment, don't the businesses need to be able to tell you that story? Wouldn't employees of that company feel like they're larger, they're part of something larger than just a paycheck when they work for these companies? And doesn't the business want to feel pride and be able to share with you what their impact is? So my colleagues and I are working on a free calculator where businesses can come in and put in data and get a basic SROI number back. The challenge with creating this calculator is a lack of data over time. Social impact businesses are still fairly new and we're trying to figure out how to track it. But I hope that someday every business can measure what they're doing and how they're impacting their community with social return on investment. And I hope that every investor, which is you, will show the world what you value by how you spend your money. Thank you.